This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. So our first guest is Lamore Freed, and she's the founder of Adafruit Industries, the recipient of the Electronic Frontier Foundation's Pioneer Award, and the author of many Make projects, um, including the Tweet a Watt, which we just did a video about recently. Why don't we show a clip? I opened it up and I reverse engineered how it worked, and then I realized that I could add a little wireless radio, these XB radios that are really easy to get, and have that data wirelessly transmitted uh, safely outside of the box to my computer. So um, I did that in a weekend, and you know, by Sunday I had a graph showing how much power I was using you know, per outlet. And it definitely made me think more about like, how much power I was using because it became a, a video game. Like, How can I get that number lower and lower, and how low can I get it while still running the factory you know, at, at full speed? Thanks for joining us, Lamore. Hello, Becky. It's great to be on your show instead of you visiting me and being on my show. I know. It's so great for you to come out to Brooklyn. To That's visit right. Us. Yeah. I'm all the way out west in, or east in the Brooklyn hood. Yeah, so. across That's the cool. Bridge. So we're here, and I brought all my stuff with me so, so I can do a bunch of teaching about how to solder. Yeah. So I, I guess we figured we'd start with the easiest through hole soldering. Maybe you can briefly describe the difference between the types. Yeah, so um, well we've got some tools here and we'll show from the overhead more detail, but um, through hole soldering is when you have parts that have legs and the legs stick through the circuit board and so you have something kind of a mechanical connection uh, and that mechanical connection makes it really easy to solder. Whereas surface mount, you have the flat circuit board and then the part sort of floats and sits on top. Mm -hmm. A little harder, um, not just because you don't have this mechanical strength connection, this thing holding in place, but because with surface mount, um, the, the pitch, the distance between the pins can be as little as half a millimeter, which is just like crazy small. Yeah. So uh, the good thing about through hole is usually much larger, a little easier, you know, to get started with that. And after a couple of attempts and, and get good at it, then you can move to surface mount. Sweet. So what are we going to put together today? Okay. So what I brought with me today is um, this Game of Life kit. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see it blinking in the camera. Um, and this is a cube I made of the Game of Life kit. So this is um, five Game of Life kits soldered together. And uh, this is a really easy kit. It's also one of the least expensive kits in the maker shed. So this is a good one to pick up. Uh, it's really blinky, um, and it's a kind of fun to put on your nightstand. Um, Sweet. Or you know, gives us a gift. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's the kit, and it, uh, I guess this is how it comes from the maker shed. So uh, maybe from the overhead, we can look at how um, the parts are. So big. Okay. So we have the circuit board. Um, and this is sometimes called a PCB, printed circuit board, which is actually not necessarily true because there's no circuits on it. It's like a printed copper board, but it's called a printed circuit board. And um, there's holes in it. You can kind of see these silver holes. And then there are some components. Um, so we're going to zoom in. You're going to see like this uh, LED, this light emitting diode. And this part, uh, you know, can actually go through the circuit board. So you can see it's through hole soldering. So um, let's check out some of the tools, and I'll just bring them over here. Um, maybe we can um, we can zoom out. Zoom here, out. I'll take the remote. And yeah, I'll we'll do it. Okay, so zoom out so we can see because the, the tools you don't want to uh, be a little you want to be able to see them. So this is our soldering station, and that's sort of the most I don't know most important part. This is the fire maker, um, and uh, this is a Weller West 50. So this is about a hundred dollar soldering iron. This is a really good quality soldering iron. It's the one we're going to give away later. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this one is excellent. This one, you know, I used uh, this model for like a decade. Yeah, it's uh, a great did surface game. mounts, um, through hole, pretty much everything. I, I carried around with me from apartment to apartment. This is like 50 or 60 watts. Let me see. Yeah, it's a 60 watt soldering iron. So this is pretty powerful. And what's nice about the soldering iron, this is something you look for in a good iron, is you have an on off switch. So you see that LED turns on and off. There's a separate connection for the soldering iron uh, itself, and then there's a temperature adjust. Um, if you have a cheaper soldering iron, uh, like a Radio Shack $10 soldering iron, it's gonna be a little bigger because everything's gonna be uh, enclosed just in the pen yeah. itself. What are you getting with the trade-offs? Uh, cheaper is cheaper, mm -hmm. but uh, it won't be uh, as good with temperature regulation. Uh, maybe it won't auto off, it, 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 um, it may damage itself over time. This iron, I mean, you can leave it on for a week and nothing happens. Yeah. I remember Matt mentioned that when he got, he had a Radio Shack iron and then he upgraded to one of the Hakos and like he said that he, 
he thought he had been he was terrible at soldering, and when he got a nicer iron, he his experience was completely different. Absolutely, yeah. If you have um, a, a cheaper iron, um, what happens is you get cold solder joints, and that's what happens when the soldering iron doesn't get hot enough, or it doesn't mm. maintain the temperature. So it melts the solder, but the, the solder doesn't melt into the hole, and we'll see that in detail later. Um, and so that's like a major, major problem because you think you're soldering, but you're not. Ah! Mm. So. Even though a hundred dollars is a lot for soldering iron, I would definitely say if you're going to start out, pay, you know, you get what you pay for. I'd say twenty-five, thirty dollars is minimum. If you can spend a hundred dollars, it's excellent. Get a hacker or a weller, you will have no problems at all with your soldering. Mm -hmm. But again, some people just don't have the money. And then if you're like super, super pro, I mean, you can spend up to a thousand dollars on an iron, and like you get to get say, tips, and it's like crazy huge, and it heats up in seconds, and so there's benefits. So anyways, you get your soldering iron. What else do we got? What other tools? Okay, so we've got the solder as well, and um, there's two kinds of solder that we brought here, and um, the thickness of the so so solder, ah, pardon me, can vary. Uh, what I suggest to start with is 0.031 inch diameter solder, which is this. This is like 0.025, I think. Basically, the finer it is, the uh, smaller pitch parts you can solder, but I suggest uh, 0.031. And then you see this one's green. You see that stripe? And then this one has no, well, this is blue, uh, but there's no green stripe on it. And that means this is a lead-free, and this is leaded solder. So why would you want to solder with lead-free in the first place? In Europe, you have to, because mm. it's required by law for uh, new, components, new components and products and solder and electronics. Uh, it's called Rojas. It's reduction of harmful substances. You have to use lead-free. Mm -hmm. It's not true in North America. You're not required to. Also, for hobbyists, it, you know, there's some countries I think they allow you to buy lead solder. Uh, lead solder is way, way, way easier to use. So, uh, I would suggest starting with lead solder. If you can, if you can get your hands on some lead solder, sure, yeah. do it. Much easier. Uh, it's shinier, easier to tell. Lead-free is tougher. The temperature has to be higher. Some, some old soldering irons uh, can't do that. Um, it's also, when it uh, gets cold, it gets gritty looking. And it's hard to tell if it's a cold solder joint or not. Oh, okay. So definitely go with the lead if you can for beginners. I would suggest, either way, by the way, some people say, oh, well, it's their lead fumes. Is it more dangerous? They're both really bad for you. <laughs> They're both really bad for you. You don't want to inhale the fumes of either. In fact, right. the fumes of the lead free are worse for you than the lead because it has to be um, a more activated flux and that's that you'll see the smoke. So what you want to do is get one of these guys. This yeah. is a fume extractor. And this is a little fan and then a carbon uh, filter, a charcoal filter. Let's show it on the overhead. Uh, this is a little little guy. Mine's a lot larger. The one I think you guys are giving away is, is bigger, also a nice yeah. big one. But you know what? It's like it doesn't really matter. Also if you have a window, windows work really good. So usually we put also it practice at, at uh, for a long time before I had a fume extractor, I practiced blowing yes. at my work while I you, did it. Well, yeah. that's sort of what you do when you don't have one and also works fine. You just learn to blow out and you, you blow away the smoke. It also gives you more visibility. So, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. I mean, I'm yeah. not going to tell people you should do that, but well, I guess <laughs> For your health. Uh, All okay. right, so we get started maybe. Yeah, maybe we should uh, we'll get some started and we'll show the tools uh, as we do that. So heat up your soldering iron to uh, 650 degrees Fahrenheit if you're doing... Um, uh, lead and uh, 700 degrees Fahrenheit if you're doing lead free and if you're in Europe I don't know get a calculator figure out what the hell that is <laughs> uh, okay so uh, you're heated up and um, you'll have a sponge uh, here um, and you want to make it a little bit damp but not too damp okay watch out don't drown it just a little uh, wetness so you can clean off the tip and then before you start you have to tin the tip of your soldering iron this one I pre-tinned because I was hanging out here but you'll notice, see that the tip here is silver. You'll want to melt a bunch of solder, and you see that flux, that smoke is getting sucked away by the fume extractor. You want to coat the tip in solder, and this cleans off the tip, and then you wipe it away. And so now you've got a nice silver tip. If you have a maybe not so good iron, uh, you'll need to do this a little bit more often. This is a good iron, so you don't have to tin it very much. And if, you, if your tip is all gummed up, can't you just like sand it down and retin no, it? No, no, never, 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 never. Don't do that. That's a big mistake. Uh, if you tin it, so the, the tip of the iron is coated with a, with a hard uh, metal coat, and, um, which is plated on, and if you file it, uh, you could really permanently damage the soldering iron tip and like, you have to throw it away, so like, don't do that. Okay. Uh, if you ever have to clean it <laughs> off, keep trying that melt, clean, melt, white melt until it gets silvered, and if it never gets that nice silver look, 
Um, get a new tip. Get a new tip. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. So let's uh, let's start out here. So we're going to uh, put this nice make um, PCB in the holder. I'm going to use this third hand tool. These are like five dollars at any hardware store. So I, I definitely suggest getting one. And uh, let's start with the resistor. That's really easy. So I'm going to take a resistor off of this tape. And then um, with resistors, you bend the leads. So you use a little staple. And then you fit it over, you see there's an image printed onto the circuit board. And you fit it so it matches right over. So that's a, if the silk screen is a hint. It's very handy. It kind of tells you where to put your parts. Yeah. And then um, you put it so the resistor is flush against the circuit board. And then you bend the legs out. And this keeps it, you see how with the through hole, it keeps it in place. It's lot. really good because you turn it over a lot while you're working on the board. Yeah, I mean, you can, as you get good, you do like six parts at a time or ten parts at a time. But, you know, we're going to start with one. So now you have these legs kind of pointing out. And then um, you clean off the soldering iron tip. And then here's the, here's the big secret, also, other than tinning the tip. This is <laughs> the other big secret. Is what you want to do is, is the tip itself doesn't get hot because it's the tip. It's actually sort of the side of the tip. So see, I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding it like this. You can see the little difference. Yeah. I'm using the side of the tip because that's what's really hot. And I heat both the wire and the pad. This is the circle. And that's one solder joint. And then the solder flows freely between the two once they're both up to You'll see right. as you push the solder in, it makes a Hershey's Kiss shape. It looks like this where it kind of wicks up the, t uh, the wire. And so you look for that Hershey's Kiss shape, mm. if you like Hershey's Kisses. Delicious. Um, okay, and then, and then you check your, it should be shiny. If you're doing leaded solder, it'll be shiny. If it's lead free, it might be a little dull looking. That's why I like the leaded solder. Mm -hmm. And then you get your diagonal cutters, and this is a really nice diagonal cutter. This is the Exolite, which is my, my favorite. I've had this for like 15 years. And you just nip it right above where the point of that Hershey's Kiss ends. So that's pretty exciting, and that's how you solder. That's pretty much it. Do you want to do one more one more piece? You want sure, to do an yeah. LED? Okay, great. Uh -huh. yeah, let's, let's do an LED. Let's go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next up, let's do an LED. Um, and so the next step is once you do resistors and capacitors, and ceramic capacitors. Those are really easy because you can't put them in backwards. Now I want to remember remind you another another hint is that Jake, you know you uh, you know how to knit and sew and stuff, and mm -hmm. and you know that if if you you know. Undoing sewing is a lot harder than sewing. Right, right. Like right. ripping a uh -huh. seam is really hard. The same with soldering and desoldering. Uh, desoldering is like 10 times harder than soldering. So you want to make sure if the part has to go in a certain way, make sure it goes in the right way the first time. Great. Tri triple check. Okay. All right, so let's uh, look carefully. So here, you see that there's an LED, and uh, you can see there's a little plus here. Maybe it's, you look at, at the, uh, I don't know if you can zoom in anymore. It's, nope, we're it's at full zoom. But there's also a flat. So you see this is rounded up here and here this is flat. And that also tells you that the LED itself has a flat shape to it. If you look at a really close photo of an LED, you'll see that flat shape. So you want to make sure that that matches. And then you press the LED against the circuit board. And again, you, you bend those leads out. And then we'll, we'll do it again. Do you want to get in here and like try the soldering? Sure. OK. Go for it. Grab it. Clean it off. Grab the solder. You can tin it before I... You don't have to. Yeah, only every like five to ten minutes, I think. I'll hold this for you. Thanks. I was taught to try to heat just the components and then touch the solder to the components to mm, melt it, but it no. doesn't always work for me. That actually will never work because if you try to do that technique, that's when you would like melt it like a blob onto here and then try to melt that blob. Um, what happens is that inside the solder, it's hollow, and there's that flux. That flux is, cleans off and, and makes the um, solder, the circuit board, the lead ready to solder, cleans off any dirt. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that there, it's actually very difficult to do the soldering, and that's why you have to heat it directly and melt directly on. Yeah, so, sure, okay, so good. Yeah. Get the so, flux out. Yeah, this is like, I mm -hmm. mean, if you're like one of the um, mill spec solders, usually you clip the leads first and then you solder. That's no. a little bit different. But um, we're not mill spec here, so um, we, we solder and then cut. All right, so there you I've go. I've got this, um, de this is my desoldering tool. Yeah, you can use a desoldering tool, and this is a vacuum pump or solder sucker, mm -hmm. and it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, we're on the overhead. Okay. 
uh, you can use the tip. See right here, there's this vacuum. So when you press this button, it releases the vacuum. So you can prep it. And then what you would do is <clears throat> you can heat up an area and then heat up, heat up, and then you can use the vacuum to suck it out. I, I have to actually have a better uh, vice for this. I would use like a pan of ice to really hold the circuit yeah. board or I'd to put it on the table. But if you want to desolder, you can use um, the solder sucker that works pretty well. Um, I would suggest if you're having to desolder something is to remove it completely and then um, uh, you know, clip the leads off if you can, oh, and then yeah. you have a little bit less because otherwise you have the whole component. You can also use um, solder wick. This is mostly for surface mount Ooh. stuff. You can use it for through hole, but uh, in general, surface mount. If you're having, I find if I use the solder sucker and then the component is just attached a tiny little bit still, I can use this yeah, to suck yeah. away the last this little is, bit. This is um, the wick. I mean, it, it wicks. It's like wick. It's wicks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a lot like the wick in a candle. It's this, it's a this thin copper braid. And um, what you can do is you lay it on top of uh, what you want to desolder, and then you actually heat it from above. And yeah, it takes it a second, it but it, uh, it, you know, I have to like, you have to sit here and like heat it and heat it and heat it, but it will um, suck the solder up through the wick. So that can be also useful for removing solder. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I definitely want to like, sort of say like five times. Uh, don't solder something wrong because it's a real pain to resolder something. You can do it, mm -hmm. and a lot of that is having a good circuit board. A good quality circuit board it will stand up to desoldering a lot better than a crummy one. It's also like a sign of a true expert as someone who's good at fixing mistakes too. I mean, it's a part of the learning curve. It is, but uh, you know, even I try to avoid having yeah. to do any desoldering. Um, it's just very easy to you know wreck the circuit board uh, if you don't have good tools or a good you know PCB, and mm -hmm. it is your learning. It's the skill set is a difficult one. Awesome. Well, that was great. Um